Emperor Qianlong has a very interesting life. Looking at the parts itself, you see that uh, his parts consists of all four of the peach blossom. We call it the pure positions. In parts, it's not the peach blossom that is that's interesting in the chart. All emperors have some form of peach blossom, of course. But the unique position of all four prosperous elements positioning itself in the parts denotes it's a very special structure. By the time he was born and ascended the throne, his father Yongjing already has secured the country and brought back from the financial chaos into stability. That's only one thing. So that means he inherited an empire that uh, is stable from the father. And plus, the father is quite interesting. is ruled with an iron fist and also helped him eradicate his siblings from the, any chances of stealing his throne from him. You know, there are a lot of interesting stories about Emperor Qianlong. He has been on the throne for 60 years officially, but he has been emperor for 64 years. Because he truly, truly respected his grandfather, which is uh, Emperor Kangxi. That's also one of the reasons why he wanted to be buried in this area, because Emperor Kangxi is actually buried here. And uh, Emperor Kangxi actually ruled for 61 years. So at his 60th year, Emperor Qianlong says he will pass the throne to his son. Also, by passing to the son, he's able to ensure that uh, the son is also knowing what to do and he can guide him as the advisor, as the mentor for another four additional years before he passed on. Now, during his lifetime, 60 years on the throne, he has won, personally won, 10 battles, military battles. He is gifted in both military and uh, literary powers. That means he's a scholar, he's an artist, he's a learned person. Plus, he's in military-wise, he's also extremely successful. So, in his old age, he decided to declare himself Sub Chin Loyan, meaning the omnipotent person. And he even wrote a book, and that book's name is Sub Chin Mo Gong Ge. And he's a very interesting uh, personality, in fact. Now, historically, his father Yong Jing and even in the previous generation, there's always a problem of who gets to ascend to the throne. Well, when Emperor Qianlong ascended the throne, he didn't have that problem. And plus, he's blessed with good health. He's blessed with um, many good children as well, so much so that he had a great life. Now, not to say that he's not capable. As, as a person, he's totally intelligent and capable and knowledgeable. So he's able to expand the Qing dynasty to a whole new era. The first half of his life was generally smooth sailing. The second part of his life started to deteriorate because he's too used to all the good fortune. Sometimes, according to historians, they say that uh, he sort of neglected or took things for granted. And therefore, in the last 20 years of his room, there's this person called Wo Sun that came into the, uh, the picture. And um, generally, according to history, Wo Sun is the number one most corrupted official in the Qing dynasty. During Qianlong Emperor's lifetime, he did a lot of contribution to the literary works of the country. One of which is this collection of books called Sei Fu Qin Xu. Now this is a very interesting collection of books because in it, in order to compile this full collection of uh, encyclopedia, he gathered all the intelligent scholars throughout the entire country to uh, write about their sub pet subjects and uh, included all the research. There are astronomy, there is poetry, there is medicine, there is of course feng shui and metaphysics. All these classics, all this knowledge is compiled into these four sort of compilation of information. So it is called Sei Fu Chin Sui. A lot of the stuff that we study in feng shui today are also derived from information from this book. Now therefore, if for without his uh, you know, foresight, to do this, uh, much of the sacred knowledge or science of um, the Chinese sages would have been lost. Another thought of the why he did this, of course there's always a, a contrary thinking, is that he did this because he wanted to unite all the scholars and when they're working for him and that he's appreciating them, these scholars will not turn and write against the Qing dynasty. So this is one way of how he is able to hold the country together. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave me a comment below and remember to subscribe for more videos.